Dear students, I welcome you back to the class of geometric design. We have been discussing about the design control factors and we will try to complete those particular factors and then we will move into the next topic that is space requirements. Before we go into it, let us look at what we have discussed in the previous interaction. In the previous interaction, we talked about the factors related to road and the specific factor which we have discussed at that time was the level of service. And then we moved into the external factors and on the external factors, we first of all talked about the topography which defines the terrain. So, we have looked at the various ways in which the terrain can be classified. Then we talked about the availability of the funds and the impact of that on the size of a facility which needs to be implemented, which you have designed as a traffic engineer. Then how the political influences can make bring a difference in terms of the location, type, size of a particular facility or any other aspect related to that particular facility because the final decision is being taken at the higher level. And finally, we concluded with the safety measures and in those safety measures we talked about that how the safety can be implemented in terms of the provision of devices or operations or by way of having the features within the design itself. Now, let us move ahead and the today's interaction is going to be on the topic like ecological aspects, the environmental aspects and then once we have been completed these particular things, it means we will be done with the factors which are going to influence the geometric design features which we will be discussing in the subsequent uh, uh, interactions which are going to follow. And then we will try to see that what are the amount of space which is required to be provided for different type of facilities where the facilities have been talked here as urban roads, rural highways, expressways or hill roads. And before going into those amount which is to be provided or the widths which are going to be provided in terms of the road space, we will also be looking at the controlling factors which define that how much space is required and why that is space is required. Let us start with the first thing that is ecological aspects today. Now, these ecological aspects they are going to make a big decision in terms of the areas like hilly areas or on rural highways which are passing through maybe the sanctuary or a ecologically sensitive area. If that is the case, then we have to see that it is not going to disturb any of the ecological aspect in that particular area in terms of a flora and fauna. And if that is getting disturbed, then what are the alternate measures which can be taken up? So, that is a key point here, ecological sensitive areas needs to be identified and we have to see what are the remedial measures, so that that sensitivity is not being jeopardized. Now, another thing is that when we are going to work in any of the area where the road is passing and if say it is passing only through a plain terrain, probably there is not going to a big difference whether it is a plain terrain or hilly area if it is passing through a century, then this particular aspect is going to be there. So, when this happens, there may be a possibility that you as an engineer has to go for a permission and this permission will come from a relevant ministry say if it is a ecological sensitive area, then that relevant ministry can be an environment ministry. So, you will be looking at the environment ministry and the proposal will go there. You have to provide your justifications why this facility can be constructed in this area and whether there is a any disturbance to any of the aspect related to that area. And if you have taken measures so as to minimize those, then what are those measures? So, everything has to be there in your document and that is why we are talking about this ecological aspect as a factor. Now, when this happens, it may be a case that you may require to shift your facility at all or there may be a change of the location within that particular area. It can also be in terms of the size of the facility. So, whatever is the size of the facility we are deciding, we say we need a, a something like 70 meters of land in the lateral direction to construct a facility may not be available and then in that case we have to see that what can be done. When such things happens, it is also being observed that there are number of issues which comes up and which can be very easily resolved if a public consultation is being done. 
and in this public consultation we have all the stakeholders and these stakeholders can be the people who are going to be affected by the provision of this facility, the experts who are going to provide the remedial measures, the organization people who are interested to construct that, even the press and media because they may also have certain things in hand and therefore, we need to satisfy them also. And if all of these things have been done amicably, then you will find that we have a very good facility. And I am taking you to the examples which have been given here, where the examples are for Bandra Worli sailing project as well as the Mumbai Pune expressway. Now, this Mumbai Pune expressway, this was the very first expressway which has come up. As you can see, it is passing through a very scenic area, but then there is a lot of vegetation around this particular facility. And when the construction was done, then there was a lot of hue and cry that this is going to disturb the whole of the ecosystem of that area in which it is passing, even though it was coming at a elevated corridor level. And this is true also, because if you have, if you have experienced by yourself that if you pass into a sanctuary area, then the noise which is being created by the vehicles, this keeps moving around in that particular area and disturbs the animals. And when the construction is going on, then there is a lot of movement of machinery, there is a lot of dust which is coming up and these are the things which are going to create problems to the environment or to the ecology at that level. So, that is to be taken care of and this was taken care of and finally, this project would come up. The another one which is being talked here is a Bandra Worli sailing project. Now, in this particular case what happened was that wherever from the location it was coming up say from Bandra and it was going to Worli side on the other side. So, this is a land area here and this is a land area here. So, there were fishermen here. So, this fishermen they became the aggrieved people they said that this is going to create a problem to the breeding grounds of fishes. And this has gone into a consultation and in that particular consultation everything has been uh, removed in terms of apprehensions and it was observed that whatever these pairs are being constructed actually they are going to become a big ground for the breeding of fishes and therefore, the quantity of fish is going to increase rather than going to be down and that is how this particular project could survive all those things which were happening around. So, this is what is an important aspect which we need to look at. The another thing which we have to see is that there can be geological disturbances. Now, geological disturbances can be in different forms, it can be in terms of faults. So, you may find that there is a strata here and then the strata is also there on the other side, but there is a fault in between. And because of this fault, if I show you in this form of the strata is being placed and if this fault is coming here, then there is a possibility that the movement is going to be there of the rock masses. And if this movement happens and you have constructed a road here at this level, it is obviously going to fail. Then the another case can be the folds. Now, when you are talking about a hilly area and the folds are there in this form and you have constructed a road on this side, then this particular fold if it is going in this one, then there is a possibility that you have a strata if this way, then this is going to survive. But if the strata is being placed, so dip is also going to create an impact in that sense. So, if this is a dip, then the flow is going in this direction, but if this is a dip, then the flow is going in the other direction. So, you can survive in one case, but you will not survive in the another case. Another case can be the soil erosion or flow. It all depends on whether the material is loose in nature it will also depend on the moisture content. So, amount of moisture which is coming into that soil and because of that soil if that is happening you may find that the soil is moving and towards the valley side and again there is going to be a failure of a road. Land degradation is another ecological issue which is being talked and which probably is going to be faced when you have uh, this scheme where the vehicles 
which have completed their life, they are going to be taken out of service and when they are taken out of a service then as a scrap they are going to be placed on a land. So, you will have different vehicles which are being placed like this and the land is going to be consumed and this is also considered as a degradation of a land. So, we have to take care that how these policies can be implemented. At the same time this is also going to be in terms of the size of a facility. Say you are going to provide a interchange where the two roads are going to be at different levels and then those connectivities are there then in that case you will find a big size is required and you have to take out the material in that area that may cause a land degradation there. Now, destruction and denudation of the forest area is of course, one another thing if you are passing your alignment through that, how many trees are going to be cut, whether you are going to place more trees against those which have been cut and you will you find that these type of uh, news keeps coming. Disturbance to natural habitats, I have already talked about it, this is one another important issue when you are passing through a sanctuary area. Interruption and disturbance to the natural drainage pattern, this is also one another important aspect. If it is not being taken care of, again your profile or your land or the which is being taken for the road construction that is going to fail. So, we should not work against the natural drainage pattern and that is where the cross drainage works needs to be brought in. So, this should become an integral part and specifically in the hilly area this is an important aspect. Loss of agricultural or vegetation land, if the size of the facility is big then what we do is that we dug roughly around a, you can say 150 mm of soil which is fertile in nature and this is being transported to a barren land and that is where you are going to place this particular soil. So, that now the fertility of the other area has been improved and whatever the total fertile area was available to you remains as such. Here you can see some of such examples, the first example which is there is related to the movement of the soil and because of that movement of the soil towards the down what we found is that this road has just failed in this area. The another case is the landslide. So, the loose material has come from the top and it has blocked the road. You can see the there is a queue of the vehicles on the other side. Here the third one which we are talking is related to the drainage. So, the water is coming from the upper region in the hilly area and the proper uh, provisions have not been made. There is no drain here and if this drain is not there then whatever the water is coming will seep into the pavement crust and obviously, this is going to fail. Then this fourth one is a very good example where the highway is passing through a sanctuary area and a passage has been provided for the animals here. So, this is an over bridge which is provided not for traffic, but for animals and it has been constructed in a manner so that they do not feel a difference between the side land and the land through which they are passing and that is how the conflict between the animal and the vehicle has been removed. The fifth is the case of a fault and because of that fault it has moved and the road has broken here. So, these are the things which may happen and if you have not taken care of all of these aspects then this will create a problem. So, I have talked about this landslides as well as the soil stability. So, big analysis needs to be done in this area when you are talking. So, geotechnical investigation will be required. So, this is one thing. Siltation of water bodies and reservoirs also happens if you are constructing a road and without understanding you are taking out the material in terms of cut and putting it towards the valley side and it goes into the water body. So, then it flows towards the location where the dam is being constructed and it silts it there that creates a problem. Another issue which has been observed is a cultural and ethnic divide and this cultural and ethnic divide if you can understand maybe by taking two examples which I have written here, one is for Kerala and another is for Mumbai. Now, if you talk about Kerala then it is something like this type of a state when you are going to the boundary of the country. What was proposed was 
to create a corridor in this form a north south corridor and this north south corridor when it was proposed then there was a hue and cry that people said that you are going to divide us as east and west and therefore, we do not want this type of a corridor which divides us. In fact, if you talk about Mumbai, Mumbai is also a linear city and there the highways have been constructed as a western highway and the eastern highway and within the western highway then you have the side which is towards the sea and the other side is away from the sea. So, those areas also have a distinction and there is a divide in that also. So, we should also look at these type of aspects when we are planning and designing or implementing any of the facility in any specific area. Aesthetic degradation is another important thing. So, whatever is being planned, how good it looks like in plan or in elevation is also important it should give you a pleasing feeling when you look at that facility either from the top or from the sides. So, if you are interested to look at more of the aspects related to these maybe you can go through SP 48 and SP 19 which are the Indian Road Congress codes and you will get some information there. Now, let us come to the environmental aspects. Under the environmental aspects whatever facilities you are going to provide they are going to be used by different road users and the vehicles are the main component of that. And that is where two aspects which are important in our air pollution and noise pollution. How we can control and abate this air pollution and noise pollution by way of providing certain roadside facilities or the roadside furniture is what we need to look at. Land degradation I have already talked this can also be a part of environmental aspect where we can think of uh, the vehicles being dumped as a scrap. And that is one big problem in the western countries because lot of vehicles are being dumped then you need a machinery to change them into a sheet and then pile them up one above the other. So, this is what is one of example of land degradations here. You may be requiring certain specific aspects to be provided in those cases where you have specific requirements like say snow. So, in those areas where there is a lot of snowfall and you have to clear it there may be a requirement of increasing the width of a facility so as to take care of that. High rainfall area you need to look at the proper cross sectional elements in terms of camber as well as the drains and the drains are going to take some space. Desert areas means the movement of the sand how to control that and how to protect your facility. Areas which are prone to rock falls, landslides the effect of high water table which is coming from the bottom, the areas with high variations in temperature etcetera. So, these two things are more prone towards the pavement side, but still we need to look at in terms of a hydrological data to see that this is not going to create an impact to your facility in terms of its failure because the material is going to be degraded. So, what you can see here is that there is a problem with respect to the snow that snow has been removed from the road and it has come to this side. So, there is a black ice which is going to be there and if this black ice is there then when you apply the brake it is going to create a big problem. So, that is a one issue we have to take care of. Here the another case is being shown with respect to the movement of the sand in the desert area. The third one is related to the noise pollution in a say shopping area because of the lot many vehicles which are coming to that and if uh, the proper measures are not being taken. And the fourth is showing you the effect of pollution on a road in an urban area where you cannot see anything beyond this particular point. So, these are the visibility aspects which are going to be affected. Now, once we have an idea about all of these things now let us look at the space requirements. So, in the case of space requirements first of all we are talking about the factors which are going to make a difference here. Like the very first thing is a road category are you going to design an expressway are you going to design a local road in a uh, urban area what exactly you are trying to design or we can talk in terms of a functional value are you interested to provide a high speed facility or you are going to provide a facility in terms of 
accessibility to a remote area where the traffic is not so high. So, these are going to define that how much space is required to construct a particular road. Type of users, so we have talked about the vehicle composition. So, composition is going to define that who are the users and whether there is a requirement of providing a exclusive facility in terms of the users who are having a higher proportion. That means, you are adding more to a carriageway which otherwise could have been used by all of the vehicles in terms of mixed uses. Then volume of users needs to be looked at in terms of existing which is again we have already talked like it can be a generated traffic in an area, it can be because of a attraction value to an area. We also need to look at the traffic which has got diverted because initially the network was congested and the people were using some other route. But now if you are improving upon the thing then these diverted vehicles will come back and this is one of the reason why in many of the cases where the facility has been expanded, it has been uh, found that uh, this is not going to work maybe after 2 to 3 months. The reason is as soon as this facility has become good, those who were diverted they have come back to this facility and that is a problem. Projected volume of users all things like in terms of vehicle, in terms of population, in terms of land uses we have to look at and land uses are going to create an attraction value, population and vehicle together they are the things which are moving, we have to provide a facility for those sizes. Type and nature of traffic in terms of the patterns which are there, at what time what type of vehicles are going to be more, can we provide the facilities in those forms or we have to provide a facility on a general basis and therefore everything remains intact as such nothing changes. Roadside land use patterns, if there is a lot of development then there are going to be a local traffic versus through traffic in that area, subjective a highway is passing th through that and therefore, the segregation will be required and if you have to do that segregation then we may require to have a frontage or a service road. So, it means again we require something like 5, 7 or 10 meters extra on either side of a main highway. So, this is increasing the size of a facility. Any other roadside amenities which are there and in some cases you need to provide the spaces for proper entry and exit as well as for parking. So, this is again going to create impact to the size of a facility. Future development in an area we have already talked, travel demand patterns and when you are looking at the operational conditions we talked about LOS in the previous interaction where we said that a desired LOS of B or C needs to be provided and for that what is going to be the size of the facility is what we are looking here. Then the another thing is the drainage requirements, so drains needs to be provided on either side this is very important thing. If it is not there then in many of the cases it has been observed that the facility which was quite good when constructed but deteriorated very fast, it has not lasted its design life. Additional land for the expansion of a facility, this is on the basis of the predicted values which we talked previously. So, we will have the predicted values and these predicted values will tell us whether we need tomorrow one lane extra in a particular direction or two lane extra in a particular direction and if that land is not being acquired then tomorrow it is going to be a problem. So, acquisition of land, so land requirement is to be looked at today. So, whatever is to be acquired, acquire it today only. Clearances to be made with respect to adjoining structures or property, because you cannot have a development and then the road is passing like this, you need to have some gap between these two things. So, this is what we are looking here. So, this is another aspect which is going again to make a difference and sometimes you will be talking about this as a setback and we will see that when look at the requirements for the spaces in different conditions. So, let us look at first of all this diagram where the road is in an open area, what is the total space which is required is from this point to this point, what it includes, it includes the drains here 
on either side, it includes the extra land which is there, which may be required for the expansion of a facility tomorrow on the basis of the projected values. It talks about the various cross sectional features here specifically being talked are shoulders and carriageways and the side slopes which are going to be there if they have been constructed in embankment. If it is in cutting also, then also this may come up. So, what you have is that you have a facility which is there within this domain which is defined as a roadway width. And then thickness of the pavement has been shown here and if you are looking at this, then this is actually the formation width. So, this is the formation level on the top of which the pavement has been constructed. So, uh, this is wrongly shown here, we can modify it like this. And then the anything rest of this is a road margin. So, the road margins plus the roadway width is what is giving you the total road length which is required in an open area. So, this is like for a highway, but when you are in an urban area, then how the things may change is on the basis of the type of development around and the users who are going to be there. So, if you look here, we may have the pedestrians, there may be a possibility of providing the space for the movement of cycles also and then all of the time we need to have the space for the vehicles to move and there may be a requirement of a space for the parking of vehicles on the road side because there is a lot of development on this side or on the other side. So, again the point is that first of all we have to understand who the users are for whom the facilities needs to be provided, then what is the type of facility which is there and then how much space that facility is going to be take and that total will give you an idea that what is the space which is required from a building to building. That means we are also looking at the spaces between the buildings. Now, let us come up to the space requirements for urban areas and this can be looked at from IRC 86 also. We have the classification of the roads which we have discussed previously under the functional classification. The land width is being defined for the three terrain conditions, the plain, rolling and hilly which is nothing but a combination of mountainous and a steep terrain. Here you can see that as high as 75 meters is being recommended in the case of urban expressways in the plain area, but it reduces to 50 meters at the maximum in the hilly area. And when you go from the top to bottom, then these values are reducing. At the same time, when you are going from plain to hilly terrain, then again the values are reducing. The reason is simple that in the hilly terrain, you cannot have lot of land which can be acquired because of the terrain conditions, topographical conditions and therefore, the values are going to be lesser. But when you talk about this local streets, then in that case it is more or less constant across all the terrains which are there and this is 10 to 15 meters. So, this is the space which has to be there at the minimum level. But when you come to the rural highways which can be looked through IRC 73, here apart from the classification of the roads and as well as the terrain which has been defined now as a plain and rolling and mountainous and steep, we also have a classification as an open area and a built up area. And then within an open area and built up area, we have NNR which is the normal value or a range being defined. So, this is what you are going to have an idea here when you are talking about the plain and rolling terrain, but as soon as you go to the mountainous and steep terrain, then only the normal values have been defined. So, in the case of plain and rolling terrain on the rural highways, if you try to see the minimum values, then they are falling in a range of 10 to 12 meters, depending on whether you are in a built up area or an open area respectively. But when you are in a mountainous and a steep, then again it is constant at 9 meters. But at the highest level, you have 24 meters where it is just double of that in the national and a state highway for a uh, plain and rolling terrain in the open area. So, there is a change which is coming in the values in this form. So, if you talked about the village roads in the previous case where we were talking about the urban roads, then there we talked about 10 to 15. Now, here it is 12 to 18 or minimum 9 meters in the case of mountainous and steep. 
Now, another case can be an expressways which can be looked at IRC SP 99, where for the rural section it says that you should have between 90 and 120 meters, but as soon as it is passing through a semi urban area, then it says we should have 120 meters because there is some space which is going to be dedicated to the traffic which is moving because of that development in the area. So, we are increasing it to that level. Now, we are looking at the multi-lane highways where two type of roads can be there, four lane divided roads and the six lane divided roads. In both of the cases, the value has been defined as 60 meters minimum and we can look at for further values here or you want to have some more information then can look at SP 84 and 87. Now, another case can be for hill roads. Here you can go through IRC 52, again the categorization remains the same. Now, we are looking at only open area and built up area in this particular code. We can use the values which we have seen in the previous one also for with respect to IRC 73. The values are more or less remain same. There also we talked about 24, 18 and the mid minimum level 9 and here also we are talking about the same. So, normal values remains the same. Exceptional value is one thing which is being added here. And this exceptional value that is changing to something like minimum of 18 meters which has to be provided under the exceptional conditions that cannot be less than it. And if it is going less than that, then there is going to be a problem with the functionality of the highway. Few things related to the hill roads here are the right of way should be enough to ensure minimum setback of 5 meters for building line from the center line of the road. So, if you have a road being constructed like this, then this is the center line and you have the building line, it means the buildings can start from this, then that is what we are talking about it. This should not be less than 5 meters, at least it should be there. Additional land shall be required at locations where there are deep cuts, high fields or if they are land slide prone areas. If those are the cases, then we need to get more land, maybe 0.5 meters, 0.4 meters, 0.8 meters. We are going to talk about that also at one of the point. If the road is expected to be upgraded, then today itself we should try to plan for a higher category and the land which is to be acquired, that land should be acquired for this higher category rather than the one which is there at the moment. So, with this we come to an end of today's interaction. And we will be continuing with the space requirements in the next lecture and if the time permits then we will be moving to the side distance requirements also in the next interaction. Thank you and bye.